with a low risk. But your approach may be good. So you take it very easily. You have to take it even if the yes is good. That is a nice approach. Because for me, I your understand. view is good. I find that because of the um, deep context inside me of temporariness, that this is temporary, uh, and because therefore everything is passing. Even this moment we are sitting together, we are talking to you, in a few hours we will disperse, and this moment will have passed. There is great beauty in that, because it is so fragile. Uh, you see a cloud formation, it looks beautiful, and you look at it, and in five minutes it has changed. Uh, so I, I find great beauty in the fact of our impermanence, in the fact that this is God. It's like that it's God. Uh, and like your teaching, I, I feel your teaching has a... I'm not saying we shouldn't act in the world, I agree with you. We have, we have to act in the world. But there is a, a basis that extends from inside to outside for me. But if you, if you have the vision like this, it is also good. If you, because you are, you are enjoying the world yeah. by having this kind of vision. It looks, everything is beautiful. It is, it is nice. <laughs> <laughs> if you are seeing some worse condition, <laughs> then, then you will be tortured to that extent. Is there any difference between having the understanding and just adapting another idea? Like someone comes and listens to you and says, well, that's a nice idea, I'm going to take up that idea. And they don't really understand for themselves from the inquiry. Is there any difference? So here, two? so if you adopt any understanding to modify ourselves, that means that is your basically wrong. Because yeah. so no modification is necessary. Right. So here we have to accept our totality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. no modification is needed. Uh, so that uh, it is against the understanding. Yeah. So no, so how to accept totally. Here and now we are in the uh, highest state. Yeah. So, so he, this is the teaching for example, I am the Atman, I am the witnessing <laughs> consciousness. That means I am the absolute. That means yeah. you are in the highest state. So that, that means whatever you do, you are the absolute state. That means you have to accept yourself as the highest one. Then no necessity to change yourself. So, uh, so psychologically, you have to accept as the total. So all work is uh, waste of energy, all work is uh, struggle. So here, when you accept yourself totally, so afterwards no teaching is necessary. Even the implementation that I have to do, let free everything, it is also an essence. So no work is needed. So even my work, my teaching is also needed, not needed. So if you follow any teaching, it will, it will create some problem. Because it is against the natural. So actually the sound, the sound, what is natural is happening always. <laughs> so what, when you do something, when you do anything, then it is against the natural. I just had the realization that actually that is suffering. There is no other suffering other than when we go against the flow. Otherwise suffering doesn't exist. That's the only place in the universe where there is suffering, is when I choose to use my intellect to go against my natural flow. When, when we use the intellect against the natural flow, then there is suffering. Yes. If I don't do that, there is no suffering. So let it be suffering. So sometimes the suffering may be there. Let it be. So, <laughs> so, uh, when we, we choose, we should not have any suffering. When we are resting uh, our we must be total. <laughs> we must be total. <laughs> we should not select. I must be free from suffering. <laughs> and also you have to accept it. <laughs> so, so you have to take the legal maxim, the king can do no wrong, whatever you do, you are doing the correct thing. Psychologically, you may do the, you may do a foolish thing, but make yourself be the king. So king can do the foolish thing. <laughs> So you are teaching basically <laughs> not to get rid of anything. Not to? Not to get rid of anything. No, get or give anything. <laughs> so she gives us teaching. <laughs> so, 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 so there is no question for ourselves. Yeah. 
because there is there is no part to be questioned. It is unquestionable fact. But just out of curiosity, I know it's not very relevant, but it just comes up out of curiosity. Do you know of any other teaching that comes uh, pretty close to what you're teaching? Do you know any other teaching uh, that comes closest to what you're saying? <coughs> so everybody is saying the same thing, but in a different language. But they are meaning the same thing. Okay. The meaning of all teachings say mean the because when you are the uh, traditional scriptures are saying that you are the absolute reality. What is the meaning behind that? When you totally accept yourself, then what is the necessity? Can you change the reality? So if you if you try to change yourself, that means you are changing the reality. You are changing the Atma. That is not necessary. When you take yourself to the uh, absolute reality, when you take yourself to the uh, Atman, then uh, nothing is to be changed. So the basic the basic structure is that. But when you uh, divide ourselves, some part of myself is Atman, and the other part is some <laughs> other thing, then, then the, uh, the other part has to reach the Atman, yes. then only the... I am the absolute, but I am not my problem. <laughs> So the scriptures must be taken in a correct sense. If you take the scripture in a correct sense, everything is same. You have to, either you have to accept you totally in the absolute reality. Each and every moment, each and every wish, each and every action, every moment, everything is absolute. Then why do you make anything? So no necessity of anything. All your action is the made, for, made by the absolute reality. So all action is the reaction of the reality. Then why you, why you, there is no place for your little self. Because everything is the part of the absolute reality. But whenever we assume some role, we claim to be somebody. <laughs> so no position, you can't take any position. Because there's always the thing that we want the magic wand that's going to make me more me. <clears throat> kind of, you know, like get rid of all my bad parts and just make me a good me. It's the illusion, isn't it? Yeah. So here, when there is no standard, this standard alone can declare you enlightened and liberated. Mm -hmm. Everybody is liberated. Everybody is enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there, is, there, is no, there is no special standard. Only this, if anybody reach that standard, he will be liberated. He will, so here then there is no standard. When we put down all the standard, so everybody is liberated. Everybody is in the state. Mm. So oh, the main thing is that we should not doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> if you doubt about it, then you have to uh, work for that, you have to struggle for that. But it seems that also not to think that one is liberated. Yeah. Not Otherwise. But here, we, anyhow, we have to confirm. Then only we will be satisfied. <laughs> so if the matter is over, that means we have finished the matter. We have to finish the matter for ourselves. Then you go along as an... There is no difference between the great master and the... Uh, this little master there. <laughs> Your <laughs> <things Mini -yatma. laughs> <laughs> Is that with this understanding, we are, we are in a state of what uh, Dhamma uh, Bhagavan has? So everybody is in the state. There is no uh, nobody is against that state. Everybody is in the state. <laughs> the main thing is that when you are uh, trying to modify, when you reach some state, then you are uh, you are against your state. Otherwise, you are in the state. But no, because what I am saying that everybody is in the state. When you are, when you think that uh, I am not in the state, I want to be the state, that means you are negating the state. You are rejecting the state. Otherwise, you are in the state. Hmm. I have one more small question. <laughs> See, many enlightened persons are uh, speaking about the darshan or Vishuruva darshan or darshan of God or, uh, or Jesus, the Christ has mentioned the Father. Uh, uh, Muhammad has seen the Allah, or the God, or the Almighty. So, uh, what thing, what it is mean? So here, 
some some guidance is necessary for the common people because they are going in their own way not to do anything so some arrangement some transformation some shifting their one place to other some work is necessary for that worship temple everything many kind of practices many kind of worship many kind of statements are like this so when we go in the path of bhakti or in the court of devotion you may have come across many devotional incidents you may have some blessings of god you may feel the blessings of god itself that way it, uh, it is also necessary otherwise uh, we will be in a struggle within each other we have some arrangement within ourselves to, to save god ourselves many kind of teachings are like that but we need not confuse with that that is not related not to whatever yeah in our evolution process solar system earth first sense last we are human beings so any purpose is there for this just mm-hmm. to enjoy the life to the nature as because any some reason behind it so when you seek a purpose uh-huh. that means you are rejecting this uh-huh. that means you are not satisfied with this uh-huh. so you select something So something is that to okay. right. so so you you expect some future uh-huh. so don't it is physically may future may be there uh-huh. uh, some future may be there some evolution may be there let it be uh-huh. but psychologically what is the necessity if you are satisfied with yourself if you are if you are total if you are whole uh-huh. the intention to be some way somewhat different because i am in a growing state i am in a lower state i have to grow more yes. that means uh-huh. you are rejecting the present state mm-hmm. yeah this question of time uh, you are saying inside you know mm-hmm. for my psychological world there is no time okay i operate without time no future no past i am in the present when we expect something we are creating future, future. <laughs> if you have no expectation future is no no but the outside world there is time Sir. there is a clock and there is time is there a, how does this what does this how does this affect this how does this inner state of no time timelessness no past no future the steady state <laughs> of present how does it impact the outer world why should do we expect any impact so that is we have work we not expect any impact so we for the outer world no escape there is no question <laughs> relaxation when you talk about it seems to be very important that relaxation so natural it will be natural but at the same time we are with the duty not to expect even relaxation exactly that's what i was thinking so here naturally it must be relaxed because everything is the flowing right there cannot be any weight so right. only the something is in the standing position it it, it has some weight so if it is in the flowing state mm-hmm. it loses the weight right so whatever is in the flowing state naturally it will be weightless so swami ji if you if there is a thought that is a memory um does that mean you're in the past or you're in the present memory of if you're just having a memory mm. of something uh it's a thought um and it's it's a reason something triggered this memory um i just uh, allow that to come and go mm. but would you is that am i in the past in that sense so here the memory is uh, uh, memory means past yeah so with the help of the memory if you expect something in our psychological structure then we are creating some time in time factor in the psychological structure mm-hmm. but at the same time with the help of our memory we can expect something some change in the external world without memory we cannot function in the world yeah. so for that memory is useful but psychologically it is useless 
It is an it is a nuisance. <laughs> right. For the memory alone says that I must be like this, I must not be like this. The memory may be the reason for your selection of this one or that one. <clears throat> But, thought, but thoughts that are related to the past aren't a problem. They just come and go like any other uh, so, so here, whatever may happen, let it be the we have to take it as a total. Yeah. So there may be, when we understand, we were, in the beginning of understanding, we have to have some uh, theory like that. We need not do anything, we need not struggle within ourselves. You can say like that. But uh, when we got the understanding, Afterwards, even you can entertain struggle itself. You let it be the struggle happen to myself. So no question, no question of uh, this must be like that, this must right. not be like that. Uh, let be the some struggle, inner struggle. Some let it be. So it must be total. There should we should not have any selection. Uh, this must be like that. This must not be like right. that. Right. Because so, I'm, I'm like tomorrow we're going to Pondicherry again for two days. So I'm having some thoughts about the hotel. Mm -hmm. Let me stay in my I see some thoughts are coming up about it. I'm imagining asking the man for the uh, password, for the uh, email. But it's not like I'm, I'm not doing anything with them. They're just coming, coming and going through. Coming so, and going through. So now they go through my mind. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so in psychologically speaking, you whatever you are doing is correct. There is no wrong. So, so you have to give uh, right. You have to give uh, to a hundred percent mark to each and everything. You should not give fail mark to anything. Yeah. It is not good. I have to give fail mark to that. Right. So you have to give pass mark to everything. To everything. But the external world is concerned. The external work is concerned. Some uh, thinking is necessary. Some thought may be necessary. You can take some necessary thought. You, do, you, you may dismiss the necessity. Right, okay. You can rely upon something, you need not rely upon something. But uh, the psychological world is concerned, you need not rely upon anything. <laughs> you have to simply allow everything as the happening. You have to simply take everything as the happening. You should not uh, give anything as a special grade. Something is lower, something is higher. For, for example, uh, if I think about God, it is uh, very great. <laughs> if I think about uh, some adverse thing, it is uh, low. There is no thing in there. Psychologically speaking, thinking of lower thing and higher thing is same. Yeah. There is no difference between them. But this external work is concerned, you have to have some relevancy. It, it, it must be relevant or irrelevant. So that uh, that is, uh, mm -hmm. you have to think in a relevant manner, in a necessary manner. That is necessary and unnecessary. But psychologically speaking, everything is, you have to give the same mark to everything. So everything's okay. Separation's okay. Duality's okay. <laughs> okay. Really? No, really. It's all really okay. All of us. Psych psychologically. Psychologically. psychologically yeah. Everything is okay. Psychologically. So everything is done by God. Mm -hmm. Everything is the destiny. So psychologically, it is correct. Yeah. Physically, you should not apply the rule to the physical world. Yeah, because there's nothing I can do about it anyways. It's coming in, in the psychological world. We used to say, it's perfect, the proof is it's there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is it possible to lose this enlightenment or this understanding? So here, so when you, when, once you understood, if you are, uh, it will not, it will be always forever. Yeah. Unless you replace the thing by another concept. Then you, you decide yourself, we have some work, I am not satisfied with this, I have to do something, then you are, you are replacing it. It means that if you, you read, consciously replace. if you read some new books or new concepts, that concept introduce, uh, corrupts this understanding, it may induce a new strive to read something or attain something. So here, the matter is only intellectual. So the intellectual matter is it is unconscious. It is not unconscious. It is a conscious. All the intellectual happening is conscious. So you have to, if you change the understanding, you have to consciously change. Otherwise, it will not, it will not change unconsciously. So you have to do it consciously. 
So if you consciously uh, do anything, this is not correct. I have to, I have to take this alone is the enlightenment. This is not enlightenment. Then only you made the change. If you do not made the change, it will be for you. But at the same time, even though you decided not to struggle against yourself, but the unconscious struggle may happen. Mm. But the unconscious struggle is not against your understanding. But the conscious uh, uh, dismissing the understanding alone is the problem. If you are if you are consciously come to a conclusion, this is not understanding, so I must uh, rely upon the understanding of another school of thought. I must follow the another school of understanding. So if you are consciously doing thing, then you are consciously replacing the conclusion. So that is your conscious work. So that is your that is in your hand. You can, but at the same time, if you understand, no work is needed. You need not. Uh, you, you it will be for you. Your habit pattern is not against your understanding. Yes, I understand. Yes, I understand. I want to another question continuation to this. Let us say uh, we go back. We compare your teachings with other teachings, other vocabulary and all. So, will it disturb or will it ensure what we understood? So, so here, yeah. how you take? That, that is in your conscious level. If anybody may say anything, but how you take is the question. If you take in a correct way, it will not be disturbance. But if you, if you, if you somewhat patient enough, somewhat uh, patient enough to discuss what's the real meaning behind all the teachings of all masters, you will find everybody is saying the same thing in a different way. Then you will come, you will have the understanding like this. And it will help that if you take this, it will help, it will help your understanding also. Uh, well, according to what he's saying, there is somebody that has reached, like you spoke about the Pranayama, Swami? Yeah. So, let's say many people live in this uh, liberation and enlightenment, but they choose to practice and teach uh, techniques, you know, like meditation, like vipassana, and um, therapy. Is, is that contradicting or is that. Uh, what, what do you feel about here? But I have also many many experience related to meditation. I myself has the capacity to teach meditation. But if I begin to teach medita meditation, I may feel many crowd around me. I can yes, always many crowd around me. <laughs> but it will disturb the quality of my teaching. But uh, so if they are, if you are interested. Uh, some crowd and uh, but sometimes it may be beneficial. So all meditation is beneficial and if I interested that it may, through some meditation then may be benefited. Why can't I take this meditation also? Uh, some some layman, some layman may be benefited and after the finish of a meditation they may come or the, the next one they may have the better quality of understanding. As a beginners, for the beginners I may teach meditation. But if we mix the two, uh, I will destroy the quality of my teaching. So I am purposefully av I am avoiding meditation. If somebody choose the meditation also, that is left to the, their choice. They may be an enlightened master, but they may with correct sense, they may also do some meditation. But at the same time, it will, uh, it will not, they will, the, their voice will not have the quality of this uh, teaching beyond meditation because what because everybody is interested to get something yeah. but when we give some practice for them to do something they are, everybody is interested to catch something and uh, uh, the main essence of uh, the enlightenment and liberation is that we have to drop everything we should not catch anything <coughs> So, so, so just a second, just, if they teach it, if you, well, you decided to teach a very specific type of teaching, but if somebody gets liberated and he understands that it's not related uh, directly, maybe in some way directed, uh, 
for the techniques, but it's not related to work and you choose to teach technique, but saying it's not liberation or knowing inside himself it's not about liberation. But this is what, because every person has maybe different uh, feeling to do something with his, with his knowledge outside, practical in the world. Like Gwenka did the Vipassana, for example. He, or Jesus uh, taught uh, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> 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 it's Christmas. Uh, many, many masters like, uh, did very specific uh, instructions or, you know. But uh, at the same time, they will not be, if they are restricted within the uh, not doing anything, put down everything. If you are restricted their teachings within the, within the area alone, there can be many enlightened persons. But if you <coughs> practice meditation alone, we can create some experience, but it will not create uh, the, you know, the liberated persons. So liberate the... Naturally, we will we'll be having, we are, we are struggling with our uh, experience. But, one, but we have to be wait for the uh, time, we have to broke <laughs> uh, after we have become bored and tired of doing meditations, we have to wait for that. <laughs> so that is not necessary. Yeah. One of the hardest <laughs> things I think is for, is for people to, to get it that it's not an experience. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. everyone's looking for an experience. Yeah, but here also yeah. someone so I think two two years back, uh, one one young girl uh, from Sweden came to my house. When she reached my house, uh, that is not time for uh, the satsang. So uh, she 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 chose the time. Uh, she did, did did not know the correct exact time of a satsang. So they are, when I in the lunch time they she came here, and uh, and I when when she came here I I was in the lunch, and I asked her to sit down in the upstairs, and she gone there and uh, while she was sitting there she has gone through some of my books, and when I after the lunch when I go there uh, she asked me. Uh, she, she, she told me about the book, Give Up Meditation and Get Enlightened. <laughs> she asked me, why do you against meditation? Shall I give up meditation? She asked me like that. So I, I simply asked, asked her, uh, how, how long you are practicing in this spiritual way? She told I am coming in the spiritual world for two months alone and I am doing some meditation. Uh, she said like that. So, so I, 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 I tried to convince that, so he did not uh, get more details and if this is the good for you and you go on with your meditation and this is the, for the person position, this is good for you and need not expect uh, the statement against meditation. Right. Uh, when time comes, in, <laughs> you may know about that, but for the time being it is good. So saying like this, but she is not ready to accept. <laughs> so you have to you have to give me the reason why you uh, against meditation. Mm. So I am in a position that I have to explain why I like. Uh, so when I explain like this, she begins to weep. <laughs> he shed tears. Uh, he is bitterly weeping. I, but I, I do not know how to console her. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> But uh, for the time, sometimes he is weeping and uh, and she gone away. And after two weeks, he returned. <laughs> One second, he returned. And I asked her uh, how is going on, what is for doing. And she told me that now I am I am doing some different kind of meditation. And I am very good. I feel very good. <laughs> uh, he told some person, some master, name of some master, and I am doing some meditation, and I feel good. So I told him, this, this is the same thing I called you earlier in the previous week itself. So this is good for you and you, uh, you need not uh, be hasty to be free from meditation. This is the time to go for meditation and you carry on with your meditation. 
So this is happening like this. So somebody, if you are interested to do meditation to get something, that is the beginning. That is good beginning. Um, naturally, you will have some good energy. It is also get good for health itself. Otherwise, you may have some blood pressure, tension. It is we can it will reduce the health. It will reduce the adverse effect of our body problem. So, <coughs> You may be get release from blood pressure, heart problem. Everything is meditation is good. Swamiji, um, I understand meditation doesn't directly help with enlightenment or reaching liberation. But I go to a, a one Mahasamadhi shrine near Tiruvannamalai. And um, sometimes I meditate, sometimes I just sit. But there's a feeling of um, uh, shakti or some influence or power or energy field there. Um, is it, I, from my understanding, that also does not help at all with enlightenment and liberation? Mm -hmm. And my, I have all.